Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our worship service on this Wednesday night here at Linden Baptist Church. We're glad that you are joining with us tonight and that we can continue to gather and to meet and to worship God um, as a church family, as the community of God, as brothers and sisters in Christ. And then we can do that um, through the miracle of the internet, through lots of different kinds of technology that have made it possible for God's people to worship together, uh, even from a great, great distance. A reminder that right now we are still in our time of collection for the Eastern Area Community Ministries Food Pantry. So if you'd like to bring some food by the church offices um, to donate to that ministry, we'll make sure that it gets there. If you need us to pick up some food on your behalf or to come to your home and pick that up to deliver it, let us know. Just give us a call at the church office. We're also still collecting for our shoebox ministry for the Appalachian region of Eastern Kentucky, um, collecting this month washcloths, bar soap, and deodorant. So if you have any of those things to donate, we would gladly take those um, to deliver with the other items that we've been collecting this year uh, for the kids, and we'll continue to collect items until we send them uh, for Christmas. So let's join together as we sing our first hymn, We Will Glorify. come to our time of prayer and as we turn our hearts and our minds to prayer I invite you to listen to these two passages from scripture ask and you will receive seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened to you Jesus also said come to me all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. In that second passage, one of the words that stands out to me is weary. I think in this day of COVID, in this day with so much going on, everywhere in our world. The word weary likely describes most, if not all of us. Each hour of each day, we hear of heartbreak. We hear of conflict, dissonance between messages that are quite confusing, and the deepening of divides between people and between nations, 
and even among families. So that is part of what we bring as we come to our time of prayer. Here at Linden, we've been inviting you to share with us a good word. Maybe we'll think of it as an antidote to all of those things that I just listed previously. And we do have some good words, things that we have shared with each other in the course of our gatherings for Wednesday night meals and our Sunday morning Bible studies. One of the good words was that there was a gift from one family in our church to other families in our church of some very yummy chocolate cake with chocolate icing. That was a gift that brought pleasure at so many levels. And even those of us who didn't receive the gift enjoyed hearing it and knowing that we are caring for each other in such a generous way. We've also learned of persons in our congregation who have had surgeries and have now been able to return to work and that getting back to a more normal life is in progress. And we do give thanks and we do give praise as we share that good word. Just gathering on Zoom for Bible studies, for Sunday morning Bible study, for our Wednesday night fellowship meal, some of us as we have meetings on Zoom, opportunities we have to gather and to connect with each other, though not in person, the contact is meaningful. The ways in which we're able to share our lives has made a positive impact on each one who has participated in each of those. Especially in our, in our last gathering on Wednesday evening, one of our members from Florida was able to join us. We haven't seen her in person in a very long time and we give thanks and share the good word of how wonderful it was to see her and to hear her voice and for her to be a part of our fellowship during that time. We also want to share a good word that we have had several among our family and friends who've been in the hospital for a variety of things who are now at home and we celebrate their reunion with those family at home who have not been able to be with them when they were in the hospital. We do share those good words. So as we come to this time of prayer, I invite you to take a moment to bring to your mind, to say to yourself the names of those persons, those situations that you want to specifically pray for as I lead us in this time of prayer. And also for those things that you offer praises that you lift those praises to God as well in this time. Will you bow with me? God, as your people, we are called to love one another. We're called to bear one, another bur one another's burdens and to pray for the needs of our world. Ours is a world, a nation, our own city, is, are all places where the need for your loving touch is evident. It's hard to look in any corner and on any street and not see evidence of unrest. To see those who are standing up for the voiceless to hear the cries of those who are in pain, to hear the calls for justice, and to hear those voices that are seeking to divide family against family, state against state, and nation against nation seeking to divide and not to unite. 
Lord, we do ask your prayer for our nation, for our world, for our city, for our families. Lord, where there is so much division, where there's so much pain, where long-term racism continues to create a chasm between persons in one neighborhood and persons in another. Lord, we do ask that you would lead and guide. That you would lead us to speak the words you would have us to speak. That you would give voice to those concerns and that you would open the ears and the minds and the hearts of our leaders that they would take seriously the call, the charge that they have to care for all people who are living under their jurisdictions. Lord, we do as your people commit ourselves to standing with those who are in need, whatever that need may be. We're aware in our world of the need of so many to experience your comfort. And our prayer is that you would empower them, that you would give them your presence as they face the difficulties, the trials that each day brings. We do remember those who are experiencing illness, those who's, who are facing the realities of COVID-19, whether at home or in the hospital, wherever that they, that they might be. Far too many separated from their family support systems at such an important time. We do pray for each one. We pray for those who give care, that their touch would be gentle and that healing would come swiftly. We do know that there are many others among our family and friends who've experienced sickness of other types, sickness from long-term illnesses, recoveries from surgeries, anticipating potential surgeries, Lord, bring healing. May your presence give them the strength they need as their body is restored to health. We remember those who are grieving, those who are grieving the death of a family member, those who in their grief have not had the opportunity to gather as a family in the way that we normally would who have not had the opportunity to surround each other with physical hugs the way that we normally would. And Lord, we, that adds in, to the grief and intensifies the experience. We do lift each one to you, that your comfort and your presence would surround them, that they would experience your love through our response and our reaching out to them. Lord, this, these prayers we lift to you, entrusting ourselves and those for whom we have prayed to your loving care. Hear our prayer. Amen. When we show love and care and help those around us, we're taking the good gifts that God has given, the, given us and we're allowing them to be used for God's kingdom and God's will as we show love and act like neighbors. And so if we see someone in need of help and we have something to provide to help them, then we share it. 
and we share it with the love of Jesus Christ. Um, not just something to do to get um, a good feeling or to get someone pushed aside and out of our hair, but something that we do because they're our neighbor, they're our family, and we treat them in love as Christ has loved us and shown us mercy. So let's sing together, Because I have been given much, I too must give. Because I have been given much, I do must give. Because of thy great bounty, Lord, each day I live. I shall divide my gifts from thee with every brother that I see who has the need of help from thee. Fed by thy good care, I cannot see another's lack, and I not share my glowing fire, my loaf of bread, my roof safe shelter overhead, that he to may be comforted. Because love been lavish so upon me, Lord. A wealth I know that was not meant for me to hoard. I shall give love to those in need, shall show thy love by word and deed. Thus shall my thanks be Our scripture for this uh, afternoon or this evening <clears throat> comes from the first letter of John, John, First uh, John, uh, chapter three, beginning in verse eleven. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning that we should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who was evil, who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? because his own deeds were evil and his brothers righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or sister are murderers, and you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. <clears throat> One of the most disturbing things to me, I think, is when I uh, roam around on Facebook and read posts from friends and friends of friends and, and, and see reactions to those posts and uh, posts about the news, uh, is, is that oftentimes the most vitriolic, acerbic, mean, nasty responses uh, to people come from Christians, uh, come from people that, that I know are church members. They go to church every Sunday. They believe themselves to be faithful church members and upholders of the gospel. But boy, when it comes to responding uh, to some of the uh, maybe political uh, opinions of their friends, uh, they just get vicious. Uh, and, and sometimes it's hard to not be impatient uh, and to respond in kind to people who jump on you. Um, and it's, it's sad that, that 
when, when it comes to responding to uh, things that we may not agree with or places where we may not see people, uh, see eye to eye with other people, uh, that we, we as Christians sometimes tend to be the hardest and meanest to each other. Um, and, and John seems to remind us that we need to be very, very careful. We need to be very, very careful about the way that we respond to one another. Uh, the way that we respond to one another when we don't agree. Uh, the way that we respond to each other when we find ourselves uh, in a position where we can't necessarily even understand uh, the position uh, that another brother or sister in Christ may hold. Because John reminds us that, that our basic call uh, in the Christian community, our, our basic call as brothers and sisters in Christ is to love one another. So that, that even when we find ourselves uh, not ag agreeing, maybe even being on polar opposite sides of an issue, uh, that we still need to find ways to maintain love in, in, in the connection, the relationship of love between brothers and sisters. Paul, you know, writing to the church in Corinth, was struggling with a church that was, was divided among a lot of, of ways, and, and he encouraged the church to learn how to speak the truth, yes, to, to be honest, to, to say this is what I think, this is what I feel, this is, this is, this is the way I see the situation, <clears throat> but to be able to speak that truth with love and in love uh, so that, that however we share our differences of opinion, our differences of perspectives with one another, that above it all and beneath it all, is our concern that we maintain the fellowship of Christian love, the, the fellowship of Christ in the body of Christ. Uh, and, and I think that um, the, the sad thing to, about the way that sometimes we tend to do this on social media becomes a pretty negative witness uh, to the world about the message of Christ's love and Christ's reconciliation. Uh, but I think this, John encourages us to go a bit further than just necessarily how we respond to each other uh, when we don't agree or, or when we don't see eye to eye. Uh, but, but he encourages us to look at our brothers and sisters, uh, those in the Christian community, and, and to, to ask ourselves, how are we responding to those brothers and sisters in the Christian community who find themselves in need? who find themselves in a situation where um, they, they don't have uh, the, the food, the, the, the shelter, when they don't have the, the resources to provide adequately for their family, when they are in uh, unsafe situations. Uh, John encourages us to look and, and remember that, that our responsibility, our accountability to our brothers and sisters in Christ extends beyond just being civil uh, in our discourse. And as I was reading this passage, I, I was reminded that uh, all brother, we, have, we as Christians have brothers and sisters all over the world. Uh, you know, we have brothers and sisters in, in different countries. We have brothers and sisters uh, in, in, that are in different um, groups of, of poverty and wealth. We have, we have people who are in situations where they are in danger. Uh, we have brothers and sisters that are in refugee camps. We have brothers and sisters who have had to flee their homes in, in order to um, not be caught up in a war or, or gang violence or other types of, of, uh, of dangerous situations that threaten children and, and, and the welfare of families. And I think it's, it behooves those of us who are Christians uh, to recognize that within the, the, the refugee community, within the displaced community, uh, within the, com the community of people who seek asylum, that there are our brothers and sisters there. And, and it, it distresses me to think that we tend to lump everybody uh, into the category of somehow or another trying to hurt us or take something away from us. And John here calls on us to see that, that when our brothers and sisters are in need, 
whatever that need may be, whether it's for food or clothing or shelter, whether it's for safety, whether it's for security, whether it's for the ability to raise their family uh, in, a, in a context that, that allows their family to grow and flourish, we as Christians, their brothers and sisters, have a responsibility to them. Not to ourselves, not, not, to, not to a government, not to an economic system, but we have a responsibility to them. And, and I think that hearing John's call for us to love and to understand what love is about uh, challenges us at that point. Because I think the key question for many of us is, who do we identify with? Do, do we identify with our brothers and sisters in need? Do we identify with our brothers and sisters in danger? Do we identify with our brothers and sisters who are oppressed? Or do we identify with a nation or a state or an economic system or a political system? And John is pretty clear here that, that we ought to be willing to lay down our lives for one another. Now you might be saying, well, are Christians only to care about Christians? No, I think Christians are to care about everybody, but, the, but John is pretty clear, if we can't care about each other, then it's going to be really hard for us to care about people who aren't a part of the family of God. So John's call is for us to recognize our brothers and sisters who may not look like us, who may not even live near us, but who are all over the world and to respond to their need and to be willing to lay ourselves on the line for their security, for their safety, for their welfare. Um, you know, at the beginning of the passage, John references Cain and Abel. And, and you'll remember that uh, in that story, when uh, Cain kills Abel, uh, that God comes looking for Cain, and, or comes looking for Abel, and he asks Cain, where is your brother? And Cain's response to the Lord was, am I my brother's keeper? And I, I think God was pretty clear in his response to Cain. And he's pretty clear in his response to us, yes. Yes, you are your brother and sister's keeper. Yes, you are responsible. Yes, you are. We are accountable for the, our, the welfare of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And when we can get our heads wrapped around that and are willing to give ourselves to that, then we can more authentically and truthfully move into the world and demonstrate the grace and the love of Christ. The passage that we read this evening closes with those very concrete words. Let's just not talk about love. Let's not just sing about love. Let's not just pray about love. Let's actually do love to one another, to our brothers and sisters in Christ, and then beyond the Christian community into the world. Amen. And amen. Love brings life into people's lives, and it's the life of Jesus Christ that we want people to experience, to have a relationship with him, and so they too can be a part of the family of God. If we love one another as Christians in the way that Jesus taught us to love, then the world will see the love of God in our relationships with each other. And then in our abundance of love, we show that same love to the world and they see Jesus Christ. So let's sing together as we finish our worship service tonight. Share his love as we commit ourselves um, time and time again to be like Jesus and to share his love. The love of God is broader than earth's vast 
expands Tis deeper and wider than the sea Love reaches out to all to bring abundant life For God so loved the world His only Son He gave Share His love by telling what the Lord has done for you Share His love by sharing of your May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be yours this day and every day. Amen and amen.